A CUSA clash in the 305 as the Panthers of FIU look to bounce back after a tough rivalry loss. On the flip side, it's the Lady Tops of Western Kentucky University playing some of their best basketball of the year. Winners of two in a row looking to continue to stay hot in conference play. Happy to have you along, everyone. Corey Brooks, Alejandro Gonzalez with you from the Ocean Bank Convocation Center. Alejandro, let's dive right in, talk about the home team in FIU. Two frustrating losses to their number one rival in FAU. How do they bounce back today? Well, FIU has to do a better job rebounding the basketball. They're number one in Conference USA in rebounds, but the other night against Florida Atlantic, minus 14 in rebounding margin. FIU really struggled on the boards. They've got to be better today. No doubt about it. FAU played very, very well in the rebounding side of things. Their mirror image almost in many ways on the other side. We said it against FAU. It's still true here against Western Kentucky, a team that also rebounds very well. Yeah, strength versus strength today. Western Kentucky strengths the same as FIU's and not just rebounds, turnovers. FIU the team that forces the most turnovers in Conference USA. Western Kentucky coming in at a close second. Today's gonna be about which team protects the ball better. Take care of the basketball, limit mistakes. That team probably comes away with a win. Saw the starting lineup there for FIU. Zeta Gonzalez getting the opening nod today. Jessica Burks-Wiley changing it up. Meanwhile, for Western Kentucky, it's the same group that has been going lately. The highlight, Acacia Hayes. She's now started nine in a row. The freshman from Murfreesboro, Tennessee, just a couple games ago, put up a 30-piece against the Roadrunners and has been in the spotlight as Western Kentucky has continued to find themselves right in the heart of the CUSA conversation. Both teams 3-2 and two in conference play, so this game means a lot for the standings, even though we're early in the conference season. Pitts and Patera, ball in the air, we're underway. Leah Henderson and Tanasia Hayes initiate the action for FIU. Trice travels. Olivia Trice incredibly active in the game against FAU, mostly from two-point land, something we haven't quite seen from her as much here early on in her Panther career. Right, Olivia Trice known more as a sharp shooter, but she's got to expand the game. We know this season she's struggled at times against Florida Atlantic, a pretty good showing for her. She hit a couple of big threes late in that fourth quarter when the Panthers were making a run. Unfortunately, that comeback fell short for FIU. Trice, 5 of 11 overall. Great ball movement for WKU and Jalen Foster has the first points. Jalen Foster makes the cut on the weak side and the pass is pinpoint on the money. We talk about Hayes getting the starting lineup as that's an easy two for Zeta Gonzalez. Jalen Foster was inserted in the WKU starting lineup about this time last year and she has been a staple in it since. Jalen Foster doing a really nice job leading this team in rebounds, steals and blocks. Quick run of the other way, two free throws for the Lady Tops. Jalen Foster, you talk about her. She's such a presence on the interior. It's gonna be a fun battle between Foster and Hope Butera on FIU's side. Butera, Conference USA's leading offensive rebounder. We talked about the importance of rebounding in this game. Fouls on Hayes, so she heads out. Ayala Lazic comes in. First free throw, good as it gets for Hayes. And how good has the freshman guard been for Western Kentucky? Leads the team in points. Back-to-back -back games where FIU faces a team that's led by a freshman. Yeah. I tell you, I think Conference USA breathed a sigh of relief. Ace, Anastasia, Alasia all going to Mississippi State. So one of the leading scorers in the conference and a dynamic trio exit. And all of a sudden, Acacia Hayes says, no, I want to make my own legacy. And instead of going to Starkville, comes to Bowling Green, and she's been dynamic. Everyone across the conference, a sigh. Oh my goodness, there's another one. And folks at Riverdale will tell you, the best one, perhaps, might be the one playing for Western Kentucky. That's a shuffling of the feet and a turnover back to the Panthers. Interesting too, the Hilltoppers have had the Conference USA Freshman of the Year two years in a row. Lori a couple years ago, Meade last year. Hayes will make her bid. There's some really good ones. We saw a pretty impressive one oh, for yeah. Florida Atlantic here a few days ago. 
Exciting times in CUSA, especially as everything will completely change in just a few months. Gutera operates up top, finding a cutting Zeta Gonzalez. Zeta Gonzalez taking the start in stride. Everything about Zeta's, Zeta Gonzalez's game is fast. She's yep. just got such a burst on that first step, and we've already seen two times already that she's cut to the basket, and her teammates have found her. Maya Meredith, a little bit too strong. Kalia Henderson, tip of the spear, she shoots two. Western Kentucky loves to play a fast brand of basketball. Their goal is to get up as many shots as possible, specifically three-point attempts. FIU responding in kind here these first couple of minutes, and a transition opportunity leads to two free throws for Kalia Henderson. Henderson, good on her first. And yeah, no team in Conference USA shoots more three-pointers than Western Kentucky. So for FIU, it's going to be important to defend the perimeter. Western Kentucky will certainly put them up at a high volume. Top 10 in the entire country in that regard. Here they come, speaking of tempo. Hayes by herself out front. Acacia Hayes. And that was engineered by Meade, who got out in transition. She leads the Hilltoppers in assists. And you see why. Yeah. She has been brilliant since the moment she put a foot on the hill. Gonzalez off the head fake, finding Trice. Trice tried to get it to Butera, pits there. Meade pushing pace, kicks back. Meredith loads up. An 0 for 2 start for Meredith. But that was a good look for Meredith. She was wide open. You got to take that shot if you're yeah. Western Kentucky. I think both of her looks have been pretty clean. Still settling into a rhythm. About a 30% shooter on the year. So numerically, the next one's going in for Meredith. Scrum for it, good save. Wide open, Hayes. Pitts feeding inside, clean two for Meredith. There you go. Offensive rebound, second chance points. Florida Atlantic lived on those second chance points the other night. And that's another travel on Olivia Trice. That'll bring Sifa Joyus into the game. One of the top flight scorers for Jessica Burks Wiley's team. Lazic will head off. Maria Torres in. This is the first time all season long that Maria Torres has not started the game for FIU. But she comes in now about three and a half minutes in. Yeah, we often see Jessica Burks Wiley bring in the leading scorer, Kalia Henderson, off the bench tonight or today rather, Kalia Henderson got the start. Constantly working it, Foster's three is off. Meredith earns a second chance. There's the offensive rebounding skill of WKU. Meade off the handoff, shooting two. Three Panther turnovers the last couple of minutes, and it's allowed WKU to find some success. Yeah, I know it's early. It's only been three minutes and 50 seconds, but the same problems that plagued FIU the other night are, are becoming an issue early in this first quarter. Turnovers and second chance points. Already a couple of offensive rebounds for WKU, and the Panthers have turned it over. Some unforced turnovers, too. The traveling violations stand out in this first quarter. That feeling of deja vu for Jessica Burks Wiley. And on the flip side, for the tops, important to start quickly. For whatever reason, they have had some slow first quarters lately, falling down double digits their last couple of games. That didn't matter, they came back and won. Oh. But it's a whole lot easier when you don't have to fight that hard that early. Tay Hayes waiting for the set to develop. Finding Henderson wide open. Lit on the basket from downtown for both teams. Hayes slicing, converting. Tanasia Hayes has really become a do-it-all guard. 
She's a true point guard. She can distribute, but she can also get to the rack and score despite the lack of size. It's about this time last year where Tanasia Hayes really found her jump shot. The highlight was the game against Old Dominion. She put up 25. Look at her there, gets to her spot, little teardrop floater. Great shot for FIU if Tanasia Hayes gets that step, gets around the first defender, and gets wide open. Wide open, Meredith. Still no threes. A rough start for her from beyond the arc, but those are all great looks. Yeah. Both teams now a combined O of six. No chance underneath Jalen Foster, the rejection. Wide open, they sagged off Pitts. She makes him pay. Eventually, one of those three-pointers has to fall, right? I mean, FIU's kind of been daring WKU to shoot the three. WKU hadn't punished them, but you're going to hit open shots. There is not a player on Western Kentucky University's roster that you can leave open. On the other side, you don't want to give Sipa Joyus any room either. She's been really good offensively, the redshirt freshman, second on the team in points per game. And you see her offensive skill set on that three-pointer. Foster, straight away. That's already seven threes that Western Kentucky has put up. They're letting it fly. On brand for them. Inside, doesn't go. Second chance, not forthcoming for Ajay Yoakum. That brings us under five. Two teams, even on the stat sheet, even on the scoreboard. 13 all here in the first quarter in Panther territory. Back at the bank, the FIU Panthers, WKU Hilltoppers, the 13 all contest. Two teams step for step, as is to be expected. Same conference record, similar numbers, all across the board, so far as advertised. It's Western Kentucky ball out of the break. Yep, competitive first six minutes of this one. I expect it to be competitive throughout the game. He trying to get by Joyus. Tara commits the foul for an and one. Mead used her speed to get past Butera, and Butera was behind Mead. That's not a good place for a defender to be. Alexis Mead has been in a scoring groove as of late. Shows why right here. And you see she gets past Hope Butera, and then Butera makes contact in that situation. The offensive player gets past you, and you're going to foul her. Foul her hard, and don't let her get the end one opportunity. Make her earn the, earn the points at the free throw line. Never anything intentional, of course, but you're right. It can't <laughs> quite be that passive. Sifa, good pass inside. Yokum, a little too strong. First board of the day for Oda Betancourt, the transfer from South Florida. Jessica Burks Wiley's old stomping ground. The Sunshine State gets some representation on both ends. Tried to play high low there with Betancourt. And foul. Come on the floor. On Sariana Rodriguez Camacho. FIU's fourth foul. Is three and a half of bonus time. Check that, that's their fifth. So the three and a half of bonus time is still true, but that is free free throws. Throw it at Betancourt. Western was deep in their set. Shot clock was winding down, and All right. you get a it, easy it look was, as it gets. It was a good defensive possession for the Panthers. It didn't look like Western Kentucky was generating any offense. The ball was kind of stuck for them. They get bailed out. Another travel there against the Panthers. That's a frustrating sequence for Sadiana. That's already five first quarter turnovers for FIU. Western Kentucky on the flip side has only turned it over once. 
We talked about how important taking care of the basketball would be in this game. Hayes off the fake, slashing. Couldn't quite put it away. Yoakum clears. From behind, Hayes poked it away. Never gave up on the play. Following your own miss in a different way. From straight away, it's Blevins. Second chance, Pitts. Third chance denied by Rodriguez Camacho. Hayes almost lost it. SRC, one of the best shooters for the Panthers, in and out. And a whistle against Yoakum and FIU. Henderson and Zeta Gonzalez will come in. And we're going all the way down. Betancourt once again. Again, it's early, but you look at the numbers. Western Kentucky has shot the ball more than FIU. Turnovers and rebounding the reason. And Western Kentucky has shot nine free throws compared to FIU only shooting two free throws thus far. Biggest difference for me in this first quarter, five fouls on FIU, five plus, just one on WKU. Right? More yeah. opportunities to score when you're shooting more free throws and you're putting up more shots. Tells you that the tops have been the aggressors, and this first quarter cannot end soon enough for that foul reset for the Panthers. Tip, Henderson saved it. Kalia driving in, a hand check on the way in. The foul's on Betancourt. Just the second on WKU though, still plenty to give. Henderson gets the friendly roll. And you knew from the start of that possession, Kalia Henderson wanted to get to the basket. She's trying to create some offense for FIU on her own. She's one of those players that can really go one-on-one. -on -one. What a pass! You know, sets it up with a wonderful feed. Lazic inside. Follow-up for Zeta Gonzalez. Right place, right time there, Zeta Gonzalez. Six early points for Zeta. Jalen Foster trying to set everything up again. Hayes, hacked. More free throws for Western Kentucky. The Lady Tops have done a great job of getting to the line in this first quarter. And FIU, on the other hand, they've got to be more disciplined dis uh, defensively. Casey Hayes, three for three from the stripe. Much like her sisters, not afraid to attack. Hayes took 13 free throws in that dub against UTSA. Hope Savori will come in for Western Kentucky. First time we have mentioned the junior from Louisville. Henderson lost her balance. As she traveled, and that's a really good job there by Macy Blevins, kind of pulling the chair out. Mm -hmm. Kalia Henderson, she's trying to post up, make contact with the defender, and Macy Blevins steps out of the way. That causes Kalia Henderson to lose her footing. 
Nearly the first points of the day for Allen. Instead, Trice, Rodriguez Camacho will shoot free throws. Coaches never like that when you foul a three-point shooter. That's any coach's pet peeve right there. Especially as FIU has only hit one three here in nine minutes. Second. Rodriguez Camacho, not a ton of free throws on the year, but she's been brilliant. Two for three. You believe in the announcer's jinx? Uh, it doesn't feel good on that one, I'll tell you <laughs> that. Savori hits on the other end. <laughs> The now combo guard, Hope Savori, gets the shooting game going. Started out as the genuine point, saw Alexis Meade take that role. Now Savori, one of the true veteran leaders on this Lady Tops roster. Two to go. Gonzalez got it to Henderson in time. Savori leaked out. Hope a little too strong over the top of Macy Blevins. The Panthers can hold for the final shot. Actually, the possession still belongs to Western. Inside cut. Two free throws for Jalen Foster, nearly an N1. What a pass by Faustino there. Great chemistry. Foster makes the cut, and the pass was right on time. That was almost another N1 opportunity for Western Kentucky. Earlier in the game, it was a brilliant feed. Faustino to Foster. We've seen it go both ways. Foster, Faustino, Faustino to Foster. The two players next to each other on the roster getting it done in tandem. Four to go, it'll be Zeta. Too strong, that's how the first quarter ends. So much for the slow start for Western Kentucky. The Hilltoppers come in behind a storm and lead by nine after one here at the bank. One quarter in the books, nearly all. WKU, the visiting team. Not quite at their normal mark from three, two of nine. And despite that, because they did everything else so well, they've got a sizable margin. Well, Corey, they got to the free throw line. They got to the free throw line early and they got there often. And then when they got to the free throw line, they hit their free throws. 12 of 13 in that first quarter, Western Kentucky from the line. Something about free throws in Miami. The Heat go 40 of 40, and now everyone has it in style. Hope Sivori, two for two. You mentioned they didn't have that three-point shot going in the first quarter. Well, the second quarter starts with a three-point basket for Western Kentucky, and there's another turnover for the Panthers, their eighth. Sivori out in front, kind of her natural point position. Hope had nine points against UAB. She's got six already. And the second quarter just started. The CUSA freshman of the year a couple of years ago looking the part. Zeta Gonzalez travels. That's, that's already like four or five travels at least on FIU. Nine turnovers for the Panthers. Western Kentucky has turned it over once. A disparity very difficult to overcome if you're the hometown Cats. Defense! 
Run in. The heat check for Hope Savori, but she was defended well by Gonzalez. Henderson turns on the afterburners. Just short. And a foul. No, out of bounds. We'll stay here, though. Yeah, that was because Hope Butera was down there with the extra effort. Was able to bounce it off a Western player. Keeps the ball with FIU. Trice with room. One and done on the inbounds. And a foul on FIU. They went into the penalty with three and a half to go in the first quarter. They commit their first about 90 seconds into this second. And it's the second on Hayes. And, and that's a bad foul, right? Because there's no point in fouling a player in that situation. You got to get back on defense. And sometimes you live and die by that press. You play aggressive, but you're going to make contact naturally. Officials called timeout. They're going to take a look at the video monitor. It will serve as our media timeout. So we'll step aside here on CUSA TV. In that huddle, we'll get the official determination in a moment. They were going back in time for a potential unobserved intentional foul. And both coaches will be called over. And the explanation will be given to them first, rightfully so. Then they'll come over and talk to us. Tasha Smith relaying the information from our officiating crew. Appreciate all three. John Marsh, Eric Koch, and Tasha Smith running the floor today here at the bank. You heard it there, so there was indeed an unobserved intentional foul on the backside. So first things first. The bonus free throws for Olivia Trice. Did you see what happened there? We don't know when they were looking back. The thing with the unobserved is it could literally be at any point because they are constantly enforcing safety. If they're allowed to look back, they believe there was one and they'll take a look at it another time. So it's Jalen Foster who is the guilty party. A common foul on Tanasia Hayes stands, but after the intentional, it's FIU basketball. So at some point in the not too distant past, Foster guilty of the intentional, but the Panthers will do nothing with the added possession. Just so sloppy for FIU in this first half. They've got to, they've got to limit those turnovers. Already in double digits in terms of turnovers, 10 for FIU. One for WKU. Big difference. Savori has been money from three. Over the back on Meredith. No, Torres, the one who's frustrated. Yoakum checks in, Torres out. Nearly every player on the Panther roster has at least one foul. The only ones who don't, Lazic and Gonzalez. Clean look from the wing, goes. I have Meredith locking in. WKU has had great looks from behind the arc all game long. That was another good one. They've been open and they've been letting it go. Meredith, the season ending injury last February has really started to find her form though. That game against UAB, she looked the best since it happened, 19 points. Always good to see the confidence return to a player after something like that especially for Meredith, who's been incredibly open about it. She talked about her struggles, even thought about quitting at one point. One of the most difficult things to do in all of sports, but Meredith's done it at a very high level. She's coming off a season high 19 points in Western Kentucky's last game, so she's really finding a rhythm offensively again. 
This time, she's guilty of the offensive foul. Gonzalez and Lazic exchanging up top. Kalia Henderson watching them fly right by. And a foul underneath the basket. So Butera. Yep. The, almost the exact same way we saw her first foul. Just kind of on the backside of a play underneath. Butera got into foul trouble in the game against Florida Atlantic, and that really hurt FIU. She's already got two fouls in the first half. They'll leave her in for now, understanding exactly what you're talking about. They need her. Run inside. Too much gas for Faustino, but Savori and company a second chance. Right in the heart. Good look from the corner. Doesn't stay. Henderson clears. Well, Western Kentucky is getting good look after good look from three. That's a good look from two yeah. for Kalia Henderson. Coast to coast that time. <laughs> FAU really locked in on Henderson. She takes it out on WKU, Savori. Henderson clears it again. Lazic wasn't ready for it, but recovered. Kalia off the bounce pass. Banked in. Lazic controls it with the header, <laughs> crosses it into the box, and Henderson scores. The Croatian soccer team, a big thing. Lazic <laughs> doing her best. Henderson tried to hit the crossover. And that's not the worst thing in the world for FIU. There was a wide open Faustino on the backside. Yeah, Faustino was making the run towards the basket and she would have been wide open. She had a step on Henderson. Rodriguez Camacho back on for the Panthers. Kalia Henderson will get a well-earned rest. Good to see Kalia Henderson scoring in this first half for FIU. She had a slow start against FAU. She's already got double-digit uh, points, 10 points tonight. Rodriguez Camacho, almost immediately upon entering the game, commits the foul on the Meredith drive. That's FIU's fourth. So the tops will get into the bonus even earlier this time. Five and a half to go until the big pause. Western Kentucky gets free throws on fouls. Yeah, and with that foul on Rodriguez Camacho, that's already four FIU Panthers that have at least two fouls. Foul trouble becoming a factor, especially for FIU, a team that has such a small rotation. Yep. Ten players on the roster, all ten of them will play. Trying to find Hayes in the corner, ball remains with FIU. Jessica Burks-Wiley wants a foul. There is not one to be had. Lobbed up. Up top with Joyus. Sifa slicing short. Second chance. There were some Western Kentucky hands that got to that one, including Aaliyah Pitts. Tough runner. Well defended by Rodriguez Camacho. Still WKU ball. Uh, take a look at the awareness from Gilvin to get around to the basketball and knock it off the FIU player. Panthers want a 30-second timeout. Jessica Burks-Wiley sensing the importance of this part of the game. Western Kentucky up by 11, halftime break looming. Kind of your last chance to change how this script has gone if you're FIU. 
Yeah, if you're FIU, you want to cut the deficit to at least single digits over these last five minutes of the half. And this is that part of the game, you mentioned it. If Western Kentucky makes a run here, they really break this game open. And then it would really have to, FIU would have to climb out of a real deep hole in the second half. Right now, Jessica burks Wiley's looking for her team to make a run, cut the deficit, get to the half with some momentum. They did make that late surge against FAU. Down about 15, cut it to one bucket. But that took too much energy, and the Owls came away with the season sweep. WKU, no strangers to comebacks themselves. They'd like to be on the easy end of it for once. Joyus will have to come back. The fouls on Alexis Mead, but the transition opportunity denied to the Panthers. Token press, outlets, Gonzalez, long two. And a travel. Western Kentucky trying to go too fast. No, that's see. just their third turnover, so. Yeah. I was going to say a rare mistake for Western Kentucky. In this first half, they've been real disciplined. Only three turnovers. They haven't committed a lot of fouls. And they get it right back. Yeah. Hayes, way out in front. Gonzalez got there and made a difference. The speed of Zeta Gonzalez saves FIU. Joyus to Torres. The Panthers getting on both ends now. That defensive effort from Zeta Gonzalez turns into some quick offense for FIU. Great hustle. Meredith playing up top with Foster. Meade, hop step in. Dish down low and one. Acacia Hayes continues to execute for Western Kentucky University. Acacia Hayes having another good game, eight points. And one opportunity for her. She shot five free throws in the game and she's made them all. Double figures in three of her last four. That is all but certain at this point for Acacia Hayes with nine. Her season average is skyrocketing these last few games. Some players need some time to figure it out. That's a moving screen on Ajay Yoakum and FIU. Hayes, of course, from a basketball family, playing at an incredibly high level, even in her prep career. But it's a different animal once you get to college basketball, especially here in the D1 ranks. Hayes working through it, now getting routine starts and routine buckets. For WKU. Ball remains with Western Kentucky, and they get free throws to boot. The foul is on Joyus. The fouls piled up in the first quarter. The fouls piling up again yep. in the second quarter on FIU. I was only joking about the 40 free throws from the Miami Heat, but the Western Kentucky Hilltoppers are pretty close. This will be 15 and 16 here in the first half. They've got a pretty good pace going if they want to get to 40. We've seen FIU go over 30 and against conference competition to boot. Right now, it is WKU making a second home at the free throw line. Three on two. Gonzalez from the wing. Searches for a foul. Western clears, and instead the foul comes on the Panthers. Maria Torres, the guilty party. And once again, Western Kentucky gets to walk down the floor and get free points. After these two, Western Kentucky will have shot 20 free throws in the first half. That 40 free throw pace has been met. 
Yoakum just went out of the game. She's got to come back in because Torres has three fouls. Foster, no good. The exceptionally rare miss for WKU, just their second. The 20th free throw is down. They've been excellent at the line, 18 for 20. Panthers need something here. Looking to create a bit of buzz headed into the locker room. Henderson hacked, that'll help. The whistle's on Foster. And Henderson does what so many tops have done in this game and goes to the free throw line. Henderson, good on a first. Kalia Henderson in this game has been the most aggressive FIU Panther offensively. She's been trying to get to the basket. That time she forces the issue, draws the contact. She's got 13. To your point, the next closest Panther is Gonzalez with six, less than half. Meanwhile, it's a really balanced scorecard for WKU. Leaders go nine, seven, and seven. And that will only continue to grow as the frustration mounts for the Panthers and Sipa Joyus. Familiar sight, Corey? Yep. Free throws for Western Kentucky feels like deja vu. This is going to be 22 free throws. Just keep adding up. Lazic in as Joyus has three fouls. Joyus has three, Torres has three, four other FIU Panthers have two. Yep. This is a nightmare for any coach. It's gonna be a challenge for Jessica Burks Wiley to manage the rotation and the minutes here with so many players in foul trouble. This roster has been challenged before. They've played games with eight available players. But right now, the 10 deep approach posing an issue. Blocking foul called on Western Kentucky and Alexis Mead. That's free throws for FIU. And you see Olivia Trice is going straight to Lazic. She's saying I was wide open on the weak side wing. No one was even in the area of Olivia Trice. She would have had an open look from three if Lazic would have seen her. But FIU gets bailed out. They'll get the free throws. For a 90% free throw shooter, you're quite okay with this outcome. You're rooting for the team from the 305. Bettencourt getting ready to come back in for WKU. Lazic good on both. Panthers pressing hard, trying to get back to their stealing ways, almost, instead of grab. And a wide open look for Hayes. Three on two. Henderson to the free throw line. Can pretty much just record us saying to the free throw line, play it on a loop here in this first half. <laughs> over and over and over again. You love the aggressiveness from Kalia Henderson here. Puts her head down, drives to the basket. Earns these free throws. You know what's interesting, Corey? Western Kentucky has had a good offensive half, but they've made just one of their last nine field goals. Yeah. And they've shot 32% from the floor. So you talk about how we've just said free throws, free throws, free throws all game. That's really been the difference. Yep. Without those free throws, Western Kentucky's really not having a great game offensively. No. They've only got a few makes from the field this entire quarter, but they haven't needed them because they've spent the better part of it in the bonus. A lane violation will come on FIU. And I think they may just be moving the basketball here. A side out of bounds play for Western Kentucky University.
Henderson, one of the best steals players in the entire conference, came up to play that one. She's now tight with Meredith. Eight to go on the shot clock. It's a Faustino three. Everything but the bottom. Great look for Faustino, unlucky. Gonzalez, explosive. Say it again. Two. Going to avoid saying <laughs> FTL this time. We'll just say she's taken two. Foul on number 21, It is remarkable, though, for two teams that love shooting threes. It was decided fairly early on that was not going to be the main route to success for either squad. Now, Western's taken 16 of them, so it's not like they haven't tried. But they have found an attacking angle, and they've exploited it in a big way. 22 free throws for Western Kentucky. FIU is going to have 14 after this one. So both teams have been getting to the line at a high rate. Since Greg Collins came to the hill, this has been one of the best three-point shooting teams, not only in the conference, but in the country. Four of the top five three-point seasons in program history have come with Greg Collins on the coaching staff. Yeah, Greg Collins really emphasizes the importance of the three-point shot. It's no secret Western Kentucky's looking to shoot those threes. Mm -hmm. that's, that's their game plan. Yep. That's what they're trying to do. To their credit, it's the mark of a great coach, adapting as a game unfolds and not being stuck in your ways with a specific game plan. WKU has certainly done that. Zeta makes it a 10-point game. Austino trapped. trapped right to Henderson. Lasic by herself out in front. Mihaila layup line go. Perfectly done by FIU. The trap leads to the steal, leads to the transition bucket, and then some extra effort again defensively. Olivia Trice going to the hardwood. Nearly took it away, but it is Topps ball. Way up. Trice does wind up taking it away. Henderson calling for it, wide open on the back side. Instead, it's Lazic right wing. Trice guarded well by Hayes. You know Olivia wanted to let that one rip, but the young, you see a Hayes right in her face. Henderson turns the corner, goes up, can't finish. Other way we go. Macy Blevins will come in for WKU. And Corey, we talked about FIU needing a response before halftime. They, they've made a response here. 6-0 run over the f last minute and a half. Yeah. There's your silver lining headed into the locker room. and something for Jessica Burks-Wiley to expound upon. Western Kentucky, though, is not done yet. Hayes forcing the issue. And Ajay Yoakum holds up her hands, frustrated. That's her third. That brings Rodriguez Camacho in, so three fouls for two fouls. Only Lazic is foul free for FIU. In every single FIU big forward slash center yeah. has three fouls. Three for Butera, three for Torres, now three for Yoakum. So you're looking at a real guard-heavy lineup now for FIU. It normally is anyway for the Panthers. They'll routinely run three, four guards, but that certainly does open things up for Betancourt on the inside as well as Foster. Foul's on Acacia Hayes. Olivia Trice. Shooting bonus.
Yeah, FIU routinely runs three or four guards, but not sure how often I've seen them run five guards. <laughs> That's what they're doing right now. Yep. Again, a whistle on a free throw. A second lane violation in a couple of minutes on FIU. A call you don't see often. We've seen it twice. Yeah, and it neglects that second free throw for the Panthers. Costly mistake. Last time FIU got it right back, almost did again. They do. Henderson the steal. Another for the already prolific Henderson. Gives it right back. So many traveling violations in this first half. 16 turnovers for FIU here at the break. I imagine that will be the headline on Jessica Burks Wiley's halftime speech. Absolutely. Faustino inside the layup goes. The Hail Mary pass is intercepted. The final sentence of this second quarter is written in red ink. The Hilltoppers of Western Kentucky University behind a dominant first quarter go to the big pause with a double digit lead on the road. FIU tries to adjust. WKU looks for win number three in a row in conference play. Back here at the bank, we begin half number two with Western Kentucky firmly in control. The good news for the Panthers, the fouls on the scoreboard reset, they go to zero. The issue is that the personal fouls do not. Three on Joyus, three on Yoakum, three on Torres. A few twos spread around as well. Western Kentucky is going to be driving to the basket early and often here in the third quarter. They're going to be able to. FIU is going to be without their bigs for an expended, extended period of time, you would imagine, because Jessica Burks Wiley certainly doesn't want Yoakum or Torres to pick up their fourth foul. And then Butera. She's got two, so that's kind of a walking a dangerous line if you're Hope Butera as well. Because one more foul and you're really talking about foul trouble. Western Kentucky should continue to drive in attack. I know that's a team that loves to shoot the three ball, right. but without FIU's bigs in the game, they're going to have some opportunities close to the basket. From an offensive standpoint, where does FIU go to try and make this comeback? Well, there's no secret FIU is going to try to play through Kalia Henderson. Their guards are OK in terms of foul trouble. Continue to feed Kalia Henderson. She was aggressive in that first half. She was driving to the basket. She got to the free throw line a few times. And she led FIU with 13 points. The next closest in terms of points was Zeta Gonzalez, who's been playing some pretty good basketball of late. So just play through your guards, Henderson and Gonzalez, and try to make a run and get back into this game. The officials are over at the review monitor. There was a discrepancy in number of fouls. That is being accounted for now. They are running it back, making sure everyone has received their proper allocation. Not all that surprising in a first half that saw 29 personal fouls between the two teams. Yeah, it was pretty chaotic <laughs> first half. We were just saying free throw. I mean, I can't even remember how many times we said free throw in that first half. Official has an explanation. Confirmation, they are checking that foul discrepancy, making sure it's correct. There are two different numbers. One in the stats and one in the book. They're going through and doing it the old-fashioned way, I believe. That's one foul, that's two, that's three. They are literally counting. They're running it back to make sure the correct number is given. That's important, you gotta get that right. Yeah. It, it all stems back to that unobserved intentional. I believe that disrupted somebody's rhythm and put a hitch in the giddy up somewhere along the line. Halftime extended here in Miami. Gives the FIU coaching staff one last beat to set some adjustments.
Looks like FIU is going to start with Hope Butera on the floor. Yeah. So we expected she's the only big for FIU that has less than three fouls. Henderson, Hayes, Trice, Butera, and Gonzalez. The five for the FIU Panthers to open things up. So two fouls beyond Foster and one on Meredith. That is the correct allocation. And Kalia Henderson inbounds. We're back underway. Tay Hayes. Takes baseline. Too strong. Followed her a miss. That was a good look. Tara battles underneath. She's blocked. And picked back up. Hits the rejection in the ball. Brilliant defensive start for Western Kentucky University. Looking for help, five to go on the shot clock. Longest possession for Western Kentucky ends in a contested three for Meredith. Sydney Russo watches on, 707 wins. The house that she built from a women's basketball perspective here at FIU. Right now, her squad is down 13. Coach Russo's name up in the rafters for nearly the entire existence of FIU women's basketball. That legend was right in the forefront. Long two, in and out for Olivia Trice. You can call me new school, but I, I, I don't love the long mid-range attempts. I think if you're gonna take a jump shot, gotta be behind the arc. And then attack the basket. It's a low percentage shot without the added benefit of a potential extra point. Jump ball, possession arrow favoring the other end of the floor. That's certainly the approach these days. The uh, cliche goes, the mid-range is a dying art. I think it's a little bit different in college basketball where almost everything is a low percentage shot except a layup. Right. But to your point, that extra one on the scoreboard Often nice when you get it, particularly from a Western Kentucky University perspective. They let it go more than anybody in the conference. A travel. One too many steps for Alexis Mead. Tara kicks, Gonzalez shoots. Caught in the corner. No points for the Panthers for two and a half minutes of this third. Credit Western Kentucky's defense. They forced some long jumpers from the Panthers. That's not what the Panthers are trying to do. Foul on Hope Butera, her third. She will remain in the game for FIU with limited relief options available. Sipa Joyus will also come on. That's, if there's any Panther that couldn't pick up a foul, it was Hope Butera. Now every single big for FIU has three fouls. See Maria Torres getting ready to check in. She also has three fouls. Right, she'll probably come in for Hope, but that's not any type of foul reset. Good follow-up chance. Alexis Mead rewarded for her efforts with the first trip to the free throw line here in half two. The smallest player on the floor crashing the glass. Grabbing the offensive rebound. Four fouls on Sipa Joyus. 
she will immediately exit the game and likely not play for at least seven minutes. So the second leading scorer for the FIU Panthers removed. We have an official review. They're gonna look back at something. After review, just a common foul, no intentional. So we resume play with two free throws for Western Kentucky University. Alexis Mead attempts eight and nine in this game. She can get to double figures with one make from the field. Not just yet. Zeta Gonzalez pushing the other way for FIU. Trice, the baseline take, left short. Need pushing pace, now taps the brakes. Travel. Gilman got caught in between decisions. The officials today have not been letting any of those traveling violations go. One extra step, instantly a turnover. Tightly officiated for sure. That's a tough lay-in for Zeta Gonzalez. Gonzalez playing extended minutes today. I think some of that has to do with her performance in the fourth quarter of the FAU game. She yep. was one of the catalysts of that FIU near comeback. Wound up with 11, despite a great Owl defense on her for three quarters. Hayes runs through and defended well by the other Hayes. Tanasia defending Acacia. Other way, here's Zeta Gonzalez again. Just too fast when she gets a step. There's no catching up to Zeta Gonzalez. Torres, got to be careful with the hands. She defended it well in transition. Straight away. Second chance earned for Western Kentucky. A ton of contact leads to Jalen Foster shooting too. Wow. The whistle's on Tanasia Hayes. That is her third, which by the current FIU standard is okay. <laughs> yeah. That's, that's the average right now. It could be worse. Panthers trying to stretch it out as much as they can here and keep themselves in position for a fourth quarter comeback. Foster. Five of six. <laughs> oh, Putera coming back in at the next available opportunity for FIU. Hayes. Hand checked on the way in, whistle on Gilvin. Just the first foul for Western Kentucky here in the third, and it comes four and a half in. Conversely, three on the Cats. Tara's back for FIU. Trying to get her the ball. Instead, it's Henderson. They've run that play a couple of times and done so very well. Yep, Kadia Henderson just cuts right under the basket. Catch it, put it on the ground once, and put it up. Doesn't have to be exotic if it works. Hayes turns the corner. Wide open, Meredith. Offensive board. Tell you what, Western Kentucky has gotten great looks from three. They're just four of 18 from downtown, but a lot of those three-point attempts have been wide open looks. Run in, Acacia Hayes shuffled her feet. The traveling violation gives it back to the Panthers. 22% for Western Kentucky. 
Not untenable, but not where they want to be for sure. Western Kentucky will call a timeout. 4.47 to go. Both teams head to the bench as we step aside. It's a 10-point lead for WKU. Jessica Burks Wiley with Maria Torres trying to draw up a strategy here. Token press from Western Kentucky. Hayes to a wide open Gonzalez. And FIU will run their set. Still 10 on the shot clock here for the Panthers. Neither team has taken it to a single digit shot clock very often in this game. It's Trice, long two, shot clock violation. She thinks she's hit from behind. Will wind up as a tops ball. That was just excellent defense by the Hilltoppers. Forced FIU to use all of that shot clock. FIU did not get a good shot off. The ball stuck with one player for too long. Meade guarded by both Trice and Gonzalez. Zeta took it away. Gonzalez to a wide open Kalia Henderson. Baseline move, <laughs> gives it right to Jalen Foster. Outlet the other way, Faustino. Hayes with her in phase, every step. Meredith charges. An offensive foul by Meredith. Yeah, she swung the elbow. Zeta Gonzalez puts her body on the line, sets the feet, goes down. The extra effort pays off for FIU as Henderson goes to the bench. Ajay Yoakum into the game for the Cats. Feels necessary to update foul status with every single sub. Ajay's at three. Hayes could utilize Hope's screen. Trice up and in. And one for Olivia Trice. talked about her earlier in the game and how she's been expanding her game this year a little bit. She used to be just a spot up three point shooter. Now she's showing that she can get to the basket, draw contact, make a layup through that contact. That's kind of what FIU needed right now to kind of shift the momentum back. Yep. Points with Kalia Henderson off the floor. Certainly the mission for FIU right now. It was Zeta Gonzalez for a stretch. Now three old school for Trice. Oh, Savori goes down. Two on Nante Hayes. In. It's now a Panther run and a five-point game. That's a 5-0 run within a few seconds. Really changes the game. Wide open. FIU sold out for the turnover. Meredith cashes in. And when you go for the trap, go for the steal so aggressively, you're bound to give up some easy buckets if Western can escape that trap. Hayes, three. Back iron, Butera, the second chance, couldn't clean it. Faustino pushing. Meredith's operating right wing as it sits, now she'll come middle. Savori was real good in the first half. Another offensive rebound for Jalen Foster and Western Kentucky University. Faustino driving on the sophomore. Gonzalez kicks. Meredith. Not the first. The third, though. Good for Hope Savori. The offensive rebounding of the third best team in the conference at it, making a difference. An FIU spurt and a Western Kentucky answer. Tops by nine. Just a 30 second timeout. Western Kentucky took that punch and got back to what they've done all game. Even with the three point shot not there for the conference's top sniping team, they have found a way to be successful, specifically in the interior. Yeah, the three point shots haven't fallen, but take a look at how they're crashing the glass. They have 11 offensive rebounds in this game. 
There's a big one for Savori. Puts herself in a good spot for an easy two. Savori already having passed her season average in points per game. She averages about seven. Did have a tremendous game against Indiana State. Sycamore saw her go off for 22. So after the Panther pause, we resume with Olivia Trice. Gonzalez, too strong. Torres, a second chance for FIU that she converts. Now it's FIU on the second chance points. Well done there. First points in a while for Maria Torres. She's been limited with foul trouble, but she's got a rebound in short order right back to Foster. Yeah, Maria Torres is not the player you want bringing the ball up the floor if you're FIU. She had to get that ball to one of the guards sooner. Quick three, scrum for it, Kalia Henderson. Maria played guard growing up. She's got that skill set, but just rushed it a little bit too much that time. Trice. Trying to find Torres was blocked. The whistle is on Jalen Foster. That is her fourth. Were it not for the stat correction and verification of the officials, Jalen Foster would be fouled out of this game right now. So I'd imagine yeah. she wouldn't have been playing. You like to see the aggressiveness from Olivia Trice if you're a Panther fan, particularly because this year she struggled from three. Just 21% coming into this game from downtown. Trice does hit her second free throw. Look at Zeta Gonzalez. And Zeta Gonzalez comes up with a big save. Inside to Torres. Back out, a wide open Yoakum. Not there. FIU has just one make from three point land in this game, one of nine. Aliyah Pitts directing traffic, screen rejected. Extra pass. Savori slicing, short. Panthers will play five on four with Savori trailing. Torres, one too many. That's a couple of, of turnovers committed by Maria Torres as she's tried to bring it down the court herself in transition. But Zeta Gonzalez playing a bit more of a combo guard. The Panthers don't necessarily have that true point on the floor right now. Torres trying to play stretch five. It's in her wheelhouse, but this is a Western Kentucky University team that has frustrated every Panther player in this game. Still FIU only down six as the fourth quarter looms. In a game where it's felt like FIU has been dominated. Oof. That'll help him. Alexis Mead makes it nine. Lead was once 15 for Western Kentucky. Henderson will have the final shot. Henderson will not even get a shot off. 59-50, Western Kentucky University on the doorstep of three wins in a row. Panthers fighting hard here in the third, but the tops have all the answers. So Western Kentucky controlling this game for its entirety to this point. They'll try and finish off the fourth quarter here. FIU looks to do something similar to what they did in their last game against FAU. It was a dominant fourth quarter for the Cats. Couldn't quite close it out. But first things first, they need that big run. Yeah, Western Kentucky took control of this game early. Since that first quarter, it's been tied the rest of the way. FIU needs a big fourth quarter now. Trice. Second chance picked up by Hope and Hayes. Tay Hayes cannot hit. Three, one, three, 
Number three versus number three, Mead v. Hayes. Mead looking to do it all herself. The height of Butera, too difficult to overcome. Well defended by Hope Butera, coming in to help out Tanasia Hayes after Mead got past her. That's how it's supposed to go for the FIU defense. Henderson saving it. Butera down low, in two, scores two. Henderson nearly lost it, recovers, finds the big. Hope Butera on the interior, easy two points for her. Called four down low, they were thinking about Blevins. But with the clock, the ally of WKU, the Hilltoppers will take their time. Tried the fate shot clock. Western Kentucky didn't bite on it, and it goes for Alexis Mead at the close. What a job by Alexis Mead, who's more of a traditional point. That time, she shows her offensive skill set right at the buzzer. All freshman team a year ago. That one's in front of Tay Hayes. Right back, WKU. Hilltoppers can reestablish double figures. Good save by Meade. Tough three. Butera defending the perimeter. Pitts earns her third chance. Hilltoppers get to kill so much time in the worst case scenario on this possession. Austino travel. That's how it ends, but anytime you take 45 seconds or so off the clock, at this point, it's a win for with WKU. Yeah, that, that possession favors Western. They're up nine points. 45 seconds came off the clock. FIU has to make sure they crash the glass after Western misses. Don't want to be giving them second, much less third opportunities like they did there. Everybody in the gym heard Jessica Burks Wiley yell, rebound. Not successful there. Trice in and out. And a long clear belongs to Western Kentucky University. Three on two. Thought about it, but they'll take their moments. Trying to drain what's left in route to three in a row. Run in and foul. Two free throws for Teresa Faustino. Asia Hayes trying to call her team over, hoping to rally the troops here. Sifa Joyus is into the game with four fouls. Yeah, Joyus is in the game trying to provide that offensive spark for FIU. Panthers have their top two scorers out there now with Henderson and Joyus playing together. But Joyus has to be real careful. See if Western attacks Joyus offensively. Have to imagine that's the plan. The 30th free throw for WKU is good. Coach Burks Wiley calls the play. The cut is Yoakum. Held it perfectly. And that was well orchestrated by Tanasia Hayes, who spotted the cut from Yoakum. Got the ball there in time. Oof. Oof. What a move for Alexis Mead. Corey, Alexis Mead has quietly put together a really solid performance offensively. She leads Western Kentucky with 16 points. This is the best game of the season for Alexis Mead. 12 against North Texas, 16 here. Double figures in four straight. Meade has gotten it done in every sense. The good news for FIU, they get to shoot with the clock stopped. Hayes shooting two. Tay's first, good.
Athanasius. Second, Bottoms, and a lane violation on FIU for the third time in the game, and two free throws have been erased. Every point matters, Corey. If this game ends close, FIU might look back to those lane violations as some big mistakes. Even if the current margin holds, that'll be a foul on Tanasia Hayes. Free throw practice, always part, but now there will be an emphasis on getting going in time for the Panthers of FIU. There is not a lot of time to practice, however. It's a triple week next week across Conference USA. FIU's getting on a plane to Denton nearly immediately after this one to take on North Texas. Western Kentucky University stays in the sunshine. They're going up to Boca Raton to play FAU. Although perhaps a little less sunshine than they hoped in the 40s today down here in Miami. Corey on that last possession, Tanasia Hayes picked up her fourth. Pitts uncontested. Didn't Ooh. quite get it. The lag defense of Zeta Gonzalez made a difference, and we're going the other way. The foul's on Aaliyah Pitts. Her second, and the second on Western Kentucky. So great hustle by Zeta Gonzalez, saves the day. Henderson thought about it. Well defended by Joseph Gilman. Lost it, Panther possession. FIU's next home game, and our next women's basketball broadcast here on ESPN Plus will be UTEP here on Thursday. FIU does play two of the three in the triple, Ayer at the Ocean Bank Convocation Center. WKU also getting back to Diddle. They've got La Tech on Thursday. Jump step, denied! Aaliyah pits the rejection. Pitts not one of the top blockers for WKU. That's Foster and Meredith, but she has been an absolute force today. Faustino taking inside and getting it to go. Bully ball for Teresa Faustino. Forcing an FIU timeout. Western Kentucky storming forward again here in the fourth quarter. And the Lady Tops have all the answers on the road against FIU. If there is to be a comeback for the FIU Panthers, it needs to start soon. WKU has played a masterful contest for 35 minutes here. In Panther territory, Butera couldn't get it. Hayes, head fake. Zeta Gonzalez backs it out. Tay Hayes inside, off the square. Panthers needed that. Panthers have to be nearly perfect from here on out. That Sorry. is textbook press break for WKU. Those long passes down the court are usually going to free someone up when FIU's pressing. And Western goes back to a familiar place. Yeah. AKA the free throw line. Attempts 31 and 32. The 31st is Bottoms. The foul, by the way, was on Kalia Henderson, her third. Faustino takes the pair. Leads at 11, it's been as large as 15. FIU cut it down to five at one point here in the second half. Henderson gets the friendly roll, got by Pitts. There's that press again from FIU and Meade using her speed. Ah, what a showing from Alexis Meade. 
We talked about it before the break. Already a new season high. Wasn't playing a ton early in the game, but WKU rides the hot hand. And without a doubt, that's the 16-point score in this one, Alexis Mead. Off left iron, WKU ball. Western Kentucky historically holds a pretty big edge over FIU. 34 to 10 all time in favor of the tops. If this result holds, they will have won three straight and 11 of their last 12. Yeah. And hold a 15-7 record here in Miami. Hilltoppers like the sunshine, as does Teresa Faustino. Faustino originally playing at Oregon State. Got quite a bit warmer, headed to Bowling Green, Kentucky. Found a rhythm, played in 29 of 30 last year. He's been a key component this year for a top team that's still pretty young for the second year in a row. You look up and down the roster, about half their production last year came from true freshmen. Abdel Gawad was, of course, the centerpiece, the CUSA Player of the Year, but she's playing pro ball in Egypt now. So those freshmen have become sophomores, and you add another dynamic player in Acacia Hayes. Bright future for Western Kentucky. It's yeah. a team that doesn't carry a single senior on the roster. So you know the best is yet to come for the Hilltoppers. Greg Collins certainly established a culture, both as an assistant and now as the head man, with an associate title in there as well. Henderson lost it, right to Gilvin. Careless turnover there for Henderson. She had Olivia Trice open in the corner, didn't see her. Little hesitation, defended well by Henderson and blocked by Butera. There's no need for Western Kentucky to go fast like that. Couple of straight possessions where they've missed within the first 10 seconds of the shot clock. Henderson buries it with confidence. It's a tough ask for WKU. It's in their DNA to go fast. Get up as many shots as possible. But right now, that serves FIU. That's a good hold right there by 3-3. Joseph Gilman takes a break. Western always circles the total field goal attempts. They feel if they have more, that's going to give them a good chance to win, independent of everything else. Gilvin from the wing won't go. That was 60 shots for WKU, 53 for FIU. Inside, Henderson is blocked. The foul's on Foster. That will be the end of the day for Jalen Foster. Kalia Henderson taking matters into her own hands here in this fourth quarter. 22 points to lead everyone in this game. Foster will put up nine points. The highlight of which is five of six from the free throw line. She also secured seven rebounds today. Savori and Hayes on for WKU as Kalia Henderson will shoot two shots. <laughs> Rick Collins watching on as FIU for the second game in a row has added some spice late. A timeout called by FIU. They're fired up on the bench. 24 points for Kalia Henderson. She may very well set a new high in this one. The Panthers are down just four. After trailing by 15, can WKU did exactly what FAU did and hold on? Either way, you got to give a lot of credit to FIU. The FIU Panthers haven't given up. Second game in a row where they've been dominated. They've been behind. But the Panthers have been led by their guard, Kalia Henderson, who splashed home that three-pointer and drove to the basket and got to the line. Kalia Henderson playing some big minutes down the stretch. About Kalia Henderson. 20-plus in two of her last three. FAU threw everything, including the kitchen sink at her. But UAB, she had 25, best game of her Panther career. She's one point away from tying two, from eclipsing that. 
just two games later. First things first, though, the Panthers will need some defense. WKU has a chance for a silencer. They turn to the veteran Savori and Faustino, who got about 30 seconds of rest. Faustino trapped. Torres got a piece. Scrum for it. Right place, right time for Meredith. Eight to go on the shot clock. Panthers must close out the 30. Savori inside. Hope Savori at the end of the shot clock. Both teams will head to the benches. They're going to review it. Ooh. Savori with the touch and a great screen by Pitts. That freed up the space for Savori. It's gonna be close to see if she got it off in time. How about it for Hope? It's a couple of big threes there in the first half and finds a way over and around the defense. Yeah, they don't good. have to look at that for very long. Officials are done reviewing it. You see it clear as day here yeah. on ESPN+. Plus. That is a good make for Hope Savori. Wow. Clutch basket for Western. Right when FIU was taking some of the momentum, Hope Savori with some great individual basketball. Screen assist from Pitts. Just like that, Western up six. Picturesque by Western. They use the full shot clock and score. Trice kicks. Lazic straight away. A big time by Acacia Hayes. She's got three Panthers on her. Held ball, but the possession arrow. Take it the other way. It still belongs to WKU. See what WKU sets up to get the ball in. Meredith is trapped and traveled. The trap was perfectly executed. That was Kalia Henderson and Maria Torres involved on the play. Just not giving Western any room to breathe, the Panthers here in desperation mode. Down six, just over a minute to play. The difference is two threes. Is that where the Panthers go? Or do they opt for a quick two? Trice denied. Ball remains with the Panthers, but critical defense from Aaliyah Pitts. Aaliyah Pitts stands tall. She's got the height advantage on Olivia Trice. Goes straight up, doesn't foul. Textbook defending. Sifa Joyus has been one of the best scorers all year for FIU. She has four fouls. Jessica Burks Wiley does not care about that right now. Joyus into the game. Timeout called. The officials are going to take a look at it. This is not a called timeout by either team. Each has two remaining. That could be important here down the stretch. I believe they're going to take a look at who that was last off of and the uh, consistent use of the review monitor, one of the prevailing themes today. Well, the initial call was FIU basketball, so they would have to find undisputable evidence. And it's off Trice. Let's take a look. Can't see the basketball there. From that angle, uh, I think it's off Western. Take another look. It's a great block by Pitts. But then she drags the ball down and OT's hand is behind her. But from there, I'm not sure I can tell for sure, sure. if Olivia Trice touched the basketball. If the initial call was, was FIU basketball, then the evidence would have to be undisputable for the officials to overturn it. One more look, a different angle here. Yeah, this you can see here underhand. There's the block, clean established. Does it hit that backhand? No, Trice pulled no. it away. Yeah. And that is the call. FIU basketball, well done by the officials. That was right to go look at it. They were fast at it. That was also a tremendous shot. A great job by our entire crew here on ESPN+. Plus. Step back, it's Lozic, short. Second chance, goes, and one, Sifa Joyus.
Ooh, Western, that's a costly foul. Joy use offensive rebound. Puts it up, puts it in. And earns the trip to the line. This is as good as a three ball if she hits the free throw. Sifa Joyus with four fouls, unafraid to attack. To make it a one score game, yes. Zeta Gonzalez is in for FIU. Joyus will go off. Panthers still trying to trap here. It's a one score game. There's that trap set up. Panthers don't have to foul. Plenty of time between shot and game. Successfully navigated. How much time does Western take before they initiate their offense? What a game late here at the Ocean Bank Convocation Center. They flip it. Savori has been the savior. No! Lozic has it. Timeout by Jessica Burks Wiley. FIU will have a chance to make it a one-point game or tie it with a two or a three. A 30-second timeout. And now, if you're Jessica Burks Wiley, who do you draw this up for? Well, you're probably going to draw this up for Kalia Henderson. I don't think you need a three right now. There's plenty of time to look for a quick two if it's there and then set up the trap, go for a steal, foul if you don't get the steal. But you definitely have capable shooters. If there's an open three that's available, you're going to take that. I think Jessica Burks Wiley will try to get the ball in the hands of Kalia Henderson, who has been FIU's leading scorer all season. And today, again, 24 points for Henderson. They opened the game talking about how similar these two teams are. And in so many ways, that has held true, including this, a final margin that has just one bucket of separation. Henderson will inbound. Western will apply no pressure until FIU gets into the half court. Trice knocked away. Tipped, and the ball's going the other way. They got it off of Trice. Maya Meredith came in. They're going to review it, as is to be expected. Let's look. This is tough to tell, but once again, initial call on the floor is Western basketball. So Faustino and Trice battle. The official has it rolling off the fingertips of Olivia Trice. Yeah. Saw Meredith fly in there. She's the one who kind of sold it. We'll I'm not sure look. with that angle you can overturn the call. To be frank, at that angle, it looked like it was off of Olivia Trice. Yeah. So the Panthers benefited from one review where Trice did not touch it. This time, it may a be a danger angle. of the opposite. Oh, that's so tough. Yeah, that's tough to tell from there. That's so tough. Faustino gets a piece for sure, but the ball doesn't really stop. Trice is there at the point. She's behind Faustino. So as you start to play a game of basketball physics, you don't quite know how it would have bent around Trice. But uh, FIU hopes for a glitch in the matrix here with 21 seconds left. My best guess here is it stays with Western Kentucky. And then if you're FIU, you got to set up a trap, go for a steal. You start to play the foul game. For Western Kentucky, this game might be decided at the free throw line. And that's fitting. Yeah. 32 free throw makes for WKU. FIU is not as far behind in that regard as they once were. 24 attempts for the Panthers, of which they've hit 21. Free throws have definitely been a theme this afternoon. And they figure to be a theme over the final 21 seconds of this ball game. Nearly 50 combined points scored with nobody on the floor moving. Extended review, underscoring the importance of the call. Remains off of Trice, WKU ball. So Torres, tallest player, she's going to guard the inbound pass. And you got four guards behind Torres. 
We're gonna try to go for a steal. Evans will send it in. She's looking for Meade, founder. Alexis Meade outlets. Faustino, the vet, is fouled. The Panthers have one more to give. That was also correctly distributed individually. It's on Henderson, her fourth. Joy Use was unable to do it. It would have been her fifth. And Joy Use will head off. Zeta in. Little offense, defense sub for Jessica Burks Wiley and FIU. Macy Blevins again. Meade again. Quick foul. And so it's Alexis Meade. And if you're rooting on from Bowling Green, you could not have asked for a better player at the strike. 7 of 9 today, over 80% on the year. Even one is huge. There it is. So that makes it a two-possession game. See if FIU takes the timeout here. Two for two. Jessica Burks Wiley has the clipboard in her hand. Points of any kind are required for FIU. This is their last one, and it is their full. Panthers hope for a miracle. WKU in search of three in a row. Maria Torres into the game, into inbound. Panthers. Got to shoot quickly here. No time. time to do all this. Lazic, Trice. Trice, baseline. Got it. Six and a half. Timeout called by WKU and Greg Collins. It is a three-point game and a 30-second timeout. WKU, you just have to get the inbound. One free throw essentially seals it for the Hilltoppers. Yeah, WKU, they can live with that two-point basket by Trice for multiple reasons. First of all, FIU took 10 seconds off the clock. Took them too long to get into their offense. Second of all, it's a two-point basket, so now it's a three-point game. For FIU to have any shot in this game, Western Kentucky has to miss both free throws. And considering the way they've shot the ball at the free throw line today, that's unlikely. 85% clip at the line today for Western Kentucky. They've made 29 of 34. If you're FIU, you must make sure this ball does not get to number three. Make somebody else do it. Needs all the way on the other side. Oh, she got it, and she's fouled. At four seconds deep on the inbound, WKU finds a way to get to their free throw superhero, Alexis Mead. Alexis Mead has already shot 11 free throws in this game. She's made nine of them. And now one free throw would be a dagger. That would all but end FIU's comeback hopes. Mead does not hit it. Now keep in mind, FIU have no timeouts. If Meade yep. misses this, they got to go the full length of the floor in six seconds. Meade makes it a two-score game late. High drama is that hung on the rim. Lazic, quick in. Delayed, held up. Joyus 
will not do it. WKU comes to Miami and holds on. And FIU flurry late makes it fun. But the Lady Tops have won three games in a row and are now four and two, firmly entrenched in the heart of the Conference USA conversation. Meanwhile, for the Panthers, they will drop a couple results in a row. Jessica Burks Wiley's team trying to find what they need to do to be successful. But this is a day written in red. WKU victorious here in the 305, and that was. 40 minutes of basketball where Western Kentucky University looked really strong. And Western Kentucky took control of the game early and never let it go, really. FIU made the run late. Too little too late for the Panthers. Western Kentucky lived at the free throw line tonight. They shot 36 free throws. And I think we got away from this other story. FIU just made too many mistakes today. 29 turnovers for the Panthers. Western Kentucky much more disciplined, just 15 turnovers for the Hilltoppers. And in the end, such a disparity, that's gonna create a difference. One of the best teams in terms of turnover margin in the conference, that squad right there. They flex that muscle again, and with four in double figures, it's enough for WKU to emerge with a four point win. All right, everything continues. There's a men's game tonight you can check out. AJ's in Bowling Green, and plenty of basketball on Monday across the conference. For J.P. Aguirre and our entire production crew here at the Ocean Bank Convocation Center, our broadcast partner Alejandro Gonzalez, I'm Corey Brooks. We'll talk to you in a couple days from Panther Territory. Good night.